And then there were three. Which of the three finalists for the Arizona Cardinals head coaching job would be the best fit? You are locked on Cardinals. Your daily Arizona Cardinals podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Welcome in Locked On Cardinals, your team every day. Alex Clancy here. Um, this is where you get Arizona Cardinals news every damn day. Follow the podcast at Locked On AZ Cards. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel as well. Numbers are skyrocketing. I want you to be a part of this. I am trying to make this as special as I possibly can for you. Into this offseason, head coaching search, into the draft, into free agency, into training camp, watching Kyler Murray hopefully rehab uh, quicker than you know what the timeline is for right now, but you cannot rush rehab. I want to make a disclaimer here quickly before I give a segment to each finalist for the Arizona Cardinals head coaching vacancy in this podcast. There are three interviews set up this week, and we will find out, hopefully by Friday, who's going to be the next head coach of the Cardinals. I want people to get off Kyler Murray's back. Please. He suffered a major injury. Even though it's more streamlined now than it was, and Adrian Peterson doing what he did and what coming back in six months is closer to what people are doing now than years ago, tearing your ACL and having surgery and going through rehab, it's a long process, okay? No, the Cardinals had did not have a good year in 2022. No, they did not have a good second half of 2021. But I am in line with the thought process that Kyler Murray hasn't been given the best coaching since he's come into the league. And this is not a knock, believe it or not, on Cliff Kingsbury. It's not. Cliff Kingsbury wasn't equipped to be in the position that he was in. That's not his fault. It's not a backhanded compliment. It's nothing. It's not an attack on Cliff Kingsbury whatsoever. Steve Kahn made the wrong hire. Kyler Murray wasn't able to grow because of Cliff Kingsbury. And this is where we are. I think it's as simple as that, personally. Cliff's a great dude, by all accounts. Interviewed him a couple times. Nice guy. Wasn't equipped to be an NFL head coach. So now, with whoever ushers in the Arizona Cardinals 2.0 regime that I've coined it, trademark pending. Patent pending? You say patent pending? Trademark pending. Patent pending? Trademark pending. Trademark pending. Sorry, what beautiful mind there. Um. Kyler Murray is going to be the quarterback, okay? And Kyler Murray at his best puts him at a top 10 quarterback in the NFL. Now, the recency bias aside, look at what he did against the Raiders in Vegas. He did that. And sure, the defense put the put the cherry on top with a scoop and score with Isaiah Simmons uh, knocking the ball loose to, on Hunter Renfro and then Byron Murphy taking it to the hizzy. But... Kyler Murray is so important to this team. And I feel like people are like, oh, it's going to take forever to come back. He's never going to be the same. Blah, 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 blah. Are people saying that about, about Joe Burrow after he tore his ACL? Now, that's probably the only time that I would compare those two because they couldn't be more different players. But quarterbacks get injured. Patrick Mahomes has missed a handful of games with injuries that weren't season-ending. Sure, he played through a high ankle sprain. You want to talk about week 17 a couple years ago, we can have that conversation about when Kyler Murray came in, got hurt, went out, then came back in for the last drive to try and save the season. But I would like people to just kind of pump the brakes. He's going through rehab. This team is going to look very, very different, and it starts with the head coach. And there are three options that the Cardinals have narrowed it down to. Lou Anarumo, defensive coordinator of the Cincinnati Bengals. Brian Flores back in the fold. Who was that? He was, a, you know, a key assistant in Pittsburgh last year, and then Mike Kafka, who took the place of Brian Dable, or you know, who's been with Brian Dable in New York. So, first off, I'm going to go. I'm going to go with Mike Kafka first, okay? Because I've said, and I'll continue to say, I've told you that I think that the Cardinals need to go with a defensive-minded head coach. 
for myriad reasons. Okay. And also I, I didn't did for, need to mention this. Uh, this podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. Okay. It's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It's professional therapy done securely online, available to people worldwide. And they have a special offer for my listeners. Get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash locked on. Mike Kafka, I don't believe is a good fit to be the next head coach for the Arizona Cardinals. I don't think he's ready. And uh, well, who are you to say? I'm just a dude who's sees things, gives his opinion on things. And if they do it again next year, the Giants, you can say the Brian Dable potentially has his first head coaching tree placed somewhere else with one of his coordinators getting a head coaching job. I still give that crown to what's happened in New York to Brian Dable. And the reason why, and you know, Jody Ayler from Fox Sports 910, um, one of my former associates, co-workers, he mentioned this, and this is right. And I've, I've talked about this a little bit, but I will give him credit for this, that all you need to see is the Bills offense after Brian Dable left that would cast the shade on, on Mike Kafka with Brian Dable being the offensive mastermind, which would kind of negate Mike Kafka's strength in his positioning to be the next head coach of the Arizona Cardinals. And, you know, if, I don't know, like if they would have hired Brian Callahan, Brian Callahan, offensive coordinator for the Bengals, out of the race, I attest that more to the skill position players that the, that the Bengals have on offense. They've got a cheat code, mad and on easy offense. So while being an offensive coordinator for that is still a difficult job, any coaching job in the NFL is difficult, it – Saw it weakens it. It weakens your stance. And you could say, well, you wanted D'Amico Ryans to be the next head coach of the Arizona Cardinals. Yeah. And again, I will say D'Amico Ryans looks like a head coach already. There are different things. And that's just not me like making my case easier and making my, you know, uh, me saying that this isn't right, you know, pointing so, uh, something else, pointing to something else. But Moving forward for the Cardinals, I think a defensive mind head coach is the way to go. And they've got two out of three options. And Mike Kafka, so say Mike Kafka, this was year three of him being OC with the Giants. And they maybe they won a playoff game next year. And then they won two playoff games the year after. And their offense was humming. And Daniel Jones was becoming one of the better quarterbacks in the NFL. They'd be like, giddy up. Sign up, partner. But that's not where we are. There are too many unknowns to throw a dart at, the, at an offensive mind just to be like, okay, this is it. It has to be an offensive guy because of Kyler Murray. I feel like that is short-sighted. And I feel like it's on the ground sighted and not looking from, you know, 30,000 feet. Like, what does the trajectory of this organization need to be? Because I'll tell you what. The San Francisco 49ers were only the San Francisco 49ers this year because their defense was dominant. It allowed Kyle Shanahan to utilize the quarterback position like others do running back positions. So with Kyler Murray coming back, he's going to be out for a handful of games this year. If you can get that defense right and keep this team in games, the sky's the limit once the offense comes back into place. And that's exactly, in my humblest of opinions, the route and trajectory the Arizona Cardinals should take with this new regime starting with the head coach. Locked on Cardinals, your team every day. Mike Kafka out, in my opinion. These next two are more difficult to discuss. Lou Anarumo is a hot name. I'm going to talk about him next. And it, here's the thing. When it comes to defensive leadership and it comes to, you know, just feel when you're looking at a defense, the Bengals defense was what the, the Bills defense was supposed to be all year. And they started that way. The Bengals defense started and ended that way, even though they had some injuries. Okay. That's leadership. That's coaching. That's what the Cardinals desperately need. I'll talk about it more in depth next. Locked on Cardinals. This episode of Locked on Cardinals is brought to you by BetterHelp. BetterHelp is 
it acts as a liaison because life doesn't come with a user manual. Okay. So when it's not working for you, it's normal to feel stuck and therapists are trained to help you figure out the cause of challenging emotions and learn productive coping skills, which makes therapy the closest thing to a guided tour of the complex engine called you. BetterHelp is connected with 3 million people with licensed therapists. It's convenient, secure, and accessible anywhere 100% online. Everyone deserves to feel their best, right? BetterHelp makes it easier to get started. As the world's largest therapy service, they've matched millions of people with professionally licensed and vetted therapists available 100% online. All the benefits of in-person therapy, plus it's more convenient, more accessible, and more affordable. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to match with a therapist. If things aren't clicking, you can easily switch to a new therapist anytime. It could not be simpler. No waiting rooms, no traffic, no endless searching for the right therapist. Get unstuck with BetterHelp. Learn more and save 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash locked on. That's betterhelp.com slash locked on. And I mean, what's better than this episode of Locked on Cardinals being sponsored by America's number one sports book in FanDuel. This year, the only app you need at your Super Bowl party is FanDuel. Super Bowl party, if I could speak. Um, we're really excited about our new sports betting partner. I mean, they're the number one sports book in America. If you're new to FanDuel, that's even better. They have so many great features that make betting on sports fun and easy. Download FanDuel now so you can bet Super Bowl 57 with a no sweat first bet. You get up to $3,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. FanDuel lets you bet on everything from the money line to point spreads to who will score a touchdown. Okay. The FanDuel app is safe, secure, super easy to use. Best of all, you get paid out your winnings instantly. So join FanDuel today, fanduel.com slash locked on to claim your no sweat first bet on Super Bowl 57. That's fanduel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Locked on Cardinals. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for making Locked on Cardinals your first listen each and every day. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Turn the notifications on. Hit a like on this video. Tell your friends. I'm going to be with you all offseason. And it's going to be a fascinating case study in Can I Change the Way I've Done Things Forever? Written by Michael Bidwell. Start Started with the GM, Monty Austin, for deep scouting roots. Brought in Dave Sears, deep scouting roots, and now the head coach. I am in the camp and have been in the camp that hiring a an inexperienced or more inexperienced head coach with a defensive mind and bringing in an experienced offensive coordinator is the recipe for success for the Cardinals. Because if you, like, okay, go with me here. I'll talk about Luana Rumo in a second. If you look at the young, potentially extremely impactful players on the offense and the defense, which side is deeper in that respect? It's the defense. Think about that. Zayvon Collins, Isaiah Simmons, Mark Wilson, Byron Murphy, Budu Baker, Jalen Thompson, Zach Gallen, Cameron Thomas, my Jay Sanders. You know how young that off that defense is? On offense, Tyler Murray, Hollywood Brown, I guess, is, is young still. Greg Dortch, Rondale Moore, Trey McBride. They haven't drafted an offensive lineman in 10 years or whatever, you know. That's it. A.J. Green just retired today. So if you look at the future of the Arizona Cardinals, And sure, quarterback is the main cog of the future. Ask the 49ers. You can do it without it if you have a great defense. Not, not to say they're going to – I'm just saying that look at the pieces on defense. I'm going to read through it again. I'm off the top of my head. This is I haven't written this down. I don't – Zayvon Collins, Isaiah Simmons, Marco Wilson, Byron Murphy, Buda Baker, Jalen Thompson, Zach Allen. My Jay Sanders, Cam Thomas, and maybe the third overall pick in Will Anderson or Jalen Carter if they don't trade back. You know how much talent that is? 
It may not be household talent. That doesn't matter. We don't care if they're household talent. Nobody knows who Zach Allen is on the East Coast. Nobody knew who Buda Baker was until they knew who Buda Baker was. So if you can get a leader and a defensive-minded head coach to partner, hopefully, with Vance Joseph, because Vance Joseph has been removed from consideration for head coach, now you're cooking. Because you know what Monty Ossifer is going to do that Steve Kime never did? Draft for need and skill. And not just throw a dart at his at his big board. Be like, oh, that sounds like a good pick. Could we just take a second? Do you know how insane it is that Steve Kime draft, that traded for Hollywood Brown and then drafted a tight end in the second round last year when you had glaring needs at edge rusher, linebacker, Inside defensive line, uh, you know, interior defensive lineman, offensive line and corner. Do you understand where we've been? Now it's going to be completely different. And that's why bringing a guy like Lou Anarumo, who ran a defense, wasn't sexy, hard hitting, stable, and a B-plus defense. That's all you need the Arizona Cardinals defense to be. And they've got the talent to be there. They've got the talent. Say what you want about Vance Joseph, okay? The Arizona Cardinals defense was set up to fail last year. I said it during the preseason. I said it during training camp. I said it when free agency was happening and the Cardinals were sitting on their, sitting on their hands. This defense is set up to fail. If the offense isn't a top five offense, the defense cannot withstand the rigors of the offenses that are being put together now. They were completely ignored. That won't happen now. Louis Anarumo, I think the Bengals gave up like 20 points a game, 21 points a game this year. Yeah, sign me up, partner. And it's not just about defensive-minded head coach. It's not just about overcorrection. It's not like... If it was over, you know, hire Van Joseph, who cares? It's not just because it's a defensive-minded guy. It's because what Michael Bidwan, Monty Osford are hopefully looking for is, out of all of the first-year potential head coaches, you need to find the one that's going to pop. You need to find the one that is a mixture of leadership, good play calling, even though he, I'm not sure if he's going to be calling the defensive sets as head coach, track record, and intangibles. And Lou Anarumo seems to check all the boxes, regardless of if he's been a head coach or not. He does. The Bengals have been... The Bengals are what people expected the Cardinals to be. Zach Taylor and Cliff Kings were both on the chopping block after the first season. Zach Taylor pivoted. You could say that Joe Burrow came in more ready than Kyler Murray. You could also say that Joe Burrow's had a more stable ecosystem in Cincinnati, which is bonkers to say because the Bengals have not been the most stable of franchises. Sure, Super Bowl runs, Boomer Esiason, they've been one of the laughing stocks of the NFL, even though they had multiple playoff appearances in a row with Andy Dalton and A.J. Green, okay? They've tasted more success, but the Cardinals have been there also. And the Bengals have just pivoted to now perennial Super Bowl contender. The the Bills, like, it doesn't matter. The Bills were a laughingstock for a while. They made four Super Bowls and lost all of them. Jim Kelly was great. Thurman Thomas was great. You know, Andre Reid and Don Beebe and that defense, like, yeah. But they haven't been stable forever. This is what the possibilities could be if some of the right decisions are made. And I think Michael Biddle has made those decisions to get us to now. Since the end of the uh, since the end of the 2022 season, but it can't stop anywhere close to now. He's got to push through this. Luana Romo would be a, a great option. Is he the best option? There's one guy still there, kind of got screwed out of a position. We'll see. I'm going to talk about him though. Brian Flores coming up next. Locked on Cardinals, your team every day. Uh, this episode of Locked on Cardinals is brought to you by Blue Nile. Valentine's Day is coming up, which means romance is in the air more than usual. I don't need to tell you, love words that. You probably had your date planned and calendar for weeks, but have you found the perfect Valentine's Day gift yet? Whether you're celebrating this day of romance or 
whether you're ready to pop the question, you can find jewelry as unique as she is with the modern convenience of online shopping at BlueNile.com. At BlueNile.com, you can find the perfect piece of jewelry for life's special moments or even create the custom engagement ring of her dreams. Blue Nile provides expert guidance, in-depth educational materials, and unique online tools that place you in control. So you can forget the usual hassles of the jewelry shopping process and focus on the romance. Every order is insured and arrives quickly in discreet packaging that won't give away what's inside. Shipping is free, and so are returns. Right now, you can save up to 50% at BlueNile.com. That's BlueNile.com for up to 50% off. BlueNile.com. Fired up today. Locked on Cardinals. Alex Clancy, follow me on Twitter. Clancy's Corner, follow the podcast at Locked on AZ Cards. Uh, shoot me a DM on Twitter. I think I'm going to open up a mailbag at some point. I'm going to give out the email address, topic ideas, just interacting. You know, we're we're toying with a couple other things over at Locked on that, that'll make it more uh, easy to interact, which I love. Like, I'd much rather interact with you more than, you know, 25 or 30 minutes a day. Um. So, yeah, the, there, there are things coming down the pipe. Mike Kafka, not the right move, in my opinion. Lou Anarumo, 1A. If they hire him, giddy up. But if the Arizona Cardinals hire Brian Flores, I think when you say safe, it's very loosely defined because Brian Flores has been a head coach, okay? Uh, wasn't always great down there in Miami. Neither was a quarterback play. So, like... Van Joseph, that's one of my biggest, when I defend Van Joseph, Trevor Simeon, Paxton Lynch, Brock Osweiler, you're not going to win in the NFL unless you have a quarterback. And he didn't have a quarterback for the two years that he was in Denver. Doesn't matter how good your defense is. If you have a porous, if you have a lesser than offense and lesser than is uh, saying it nicely about the Broncos offense when Van Joseph was there, you're not going to win. You're not going to keep your job. Brian Flores, immediate leader. It's obvious. Everybody knows that. Um, he was the kind of the, the one that got out of the, the Belichick coaching web or tree and actually performed well, like Bill O'Brien, fine. He won a cup, but he's, you know, he uh, poisoned the water in, in Houston and, you know, he's not there now. He's back with new England. I mean, Matt Patricia was terrible head coach. Um, you know, it's just Charlie Weiss. You know, but like Brian Flores came in, it's like, you know what? This guy's going to be different. You could just tell. He's a head coach. He's a head coach. You could, you could just see that with coordinators. You can just see it sometimes. He was a head coach. Brian Dable, head coach. You could just see it before he became head coach. So if they hire Brian Flores, giddy up. Fine. Now, this isn't a rush. This is This will come down to splitting hairs. I think between Lou Anarumo and, and Brian Flores, because I don't, Brian Flores' head coaching experience hasn't been extensive enough to where that's a deciding factor. Sure. He has win loss. He has a win loss record as head coach. Lou Anarumo doesn't. Lou Anarumo's touched success and Brian Flores hasn't. Brian Flores touched success in New England, but do you give the credit to Bill Belichick because that's his beast? That's his cog. That's his ecosystem. That's what he does. It's the same kind of thing with Brian Dable and Mike, Mike Kafka to a much lesser extent. But was that Bill Belichick? Is he just the best schemer in foot in the history of football over the last 20 or 30 years? Is he? We don't know. But what I do know is Brian Flores will come in here. He'll change some things. He's the history teacher. He's the English teacher. Whose finals are keeping students up all night studying. That's something that the Cardinals need. The Cardinals need an enforcer. I think Lou Anarumo could be that also. But Brian Flores has this innate respect, inherent respect over his tenure that's like now perpetual. He commands attention. And not in like a bad way. He commands respect. He commands like, like the offensive version of that I think was Brian Dable. It's like commands. It's like okay, you can look at my you can look at my 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 resume. You can look at all that. Just look at me on the field. Look at me on the sidelines. Look at how I interact with players. Look at all this stuff. And Brian Flores checks all those boxes. Who do I think should be the next head coach of the Arizona Cardinals? Who do I think at this point? 
I'm going to give it to Lou Anarumo. I've seen more recently with much more impact from him than I have from Brian Flores. Just sheer circumstance. The only knock, the only thing that's in the back of my head is when the offense is that good for Cincinnati, you're able to take more liberties on defense. You're able to be a little bit more opportunistic. But when they held Patrick Mahomes to 20 points, 23 at the end in the AFC Championship game, that's really all I need to see. On the road, I don't care how many receivers he had out. It's Patrick Mahomes. You hold him to a 20-burger before the, the penalty. That's all I need to see. Alex Nancy locked on Cardinals. I'll continue this conversation throughout the week. It's kind of a hurry up and wait at this point, and I'm here for it. Follow me on Twitter, Clancy's Corner. Please like, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Um, I'll be here with you. I promise you that. I'll talk to you tomorrow.